Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to True Sound Studios. I'm Weezna. So today I got a really packed video. We're gonna unbox the RME 12 mic. Then I'm gonna install it on my desk. I'm going to wire it up to the rest of my gear. And then I'm gonna install some low profile XLR connectors so that the wires aren't in the way because I'm mounting it on my desk. And then last, I'm gonna record my drum kit using the RME 12 mic so you guys have a quick little audio demo of what it sounds like. All right, so let's get in this video. Okay, so to get started, obviously we're gonna unbox the RME 12 mic. So after you get the clear plastic off, you can slip this sleeve out of here, exposing this white box. And then after you open this up, the first thing you're gonna see is a hard copy of the RME 12 mic manual, which has been extremely useful getting to know this new unit and not having to go on the internet to look up the manual. And then underneath that is a bag with a couple cables and the rack ears for the RME 12 mic. So these are the rack ears and then there's also some rubber feet if you don't want to rack mount it. Here we have the power cable, and then this is an ethernet cable, which is one of the ways you can connect the RME 12 mic to your system. And then underneath that is the actual RME 12 mic unit itself. So on the front here, we have an endless encoder with a small screen and some buttons, which allow us to change just about every setting you can think of inside the RME 12 mic. We have 12 mic connections as well as 12 line connections and then four instrument inputs on channels one through four. And then on the back of the RME 12 mic, these are all the connections. So starting at the very, very right hand side, we have the power connector and the power switch. There is a standby button on the very front of the unit. And on the back here, there's also a redundant power supply jack there. So you can have an additional power supply. And then we have three ADAT outputs, which is totally configurable inside of the software. We have a word clock in and out, which is coaxial. We have a MADI in and out coax. And then we have a MADI SFP module, so you can add on to whatever type of connection you need. There is a USB connection for firmware. Now this is not to connect to your computer. And then two AVB ethernet connections. Okay, so here, all I'm doing is just reconfiguring my desk a little bit to make space for the 12 mic. So I just removed the 2U blank plate, the very top, pushed up the Ferrofish A16 to make room for the 12 mic. Now I actually end up changing all this again anyways, but this is at least what I did originally. Okay, so now to hook this up. So this is the back of my computer with the RME HD SPE MADI card. I have two coaxial cables going into that card. And then the other two are connected. One goes into the RME M32 MADI in. I have a short little cable going MADI out into the input of the 12 mic MADI in. And then the MADI output of the 12 mic goes back to my computer. Okay, so this is what we got. This is the RME 12 mic. And so right now, this is my line in for, for, for all the analog gear eventually all comes together and it comes back into the DAW through these two uh, inputs. But I'm gonna switch these. I'm gonna have a patch bay in the back that'll switch these from the TRS line inputs to the two microphone inputs so I can still run 12 full microphones on this. So what I got here, I actually have, I have 12 of these low profile XLR connectors and this is what they look like. So you got your XLR plug, you know, it's just, it's just very small. It doesn't have the big tail coming out of it and you can actually adjust where the wire comes out of it. So you can actually rotate that around and get the wires to be wherever you want, which is gonna work out really nicely with where I want these wires to just go straight back right behind the monitor and then this way you won't see it. So up until this point, I've been just literally grabbing my snake cable. Obviously I took off all the ends um, and I've just been jamming them into here and you know, the cables block the monitor and you know, it's, it's not a perfect situation, which is the reason why I got these low profile connectors. Now, truly in like a perfect world, this thing 
would be in the drum room. You know, it'd be um, in the other room and and not up here. But because this thing runs on Matty, well, at least that's how I'm connecting it to my system. So I can use the Ferro Fish, the, uh, the M32, and the 12 mic. I, I, I don't have any Matty cables running from here into into my drum room so i you know it's it's just it's not going to work out at least for this studio unless i tear apart rooms to have this thing in the other room something that's making the best out of it it's going to stay up here which is nice because then you know i at least get to see it all and because everything is is touch screen um you know i can do some of the changes up here but what's awesome about this is that you can actually connect this to a laptop and control the entire thing so that's why this is going to work out so i'll have my laptop in the other room and that will remotely control all this but actually for me as a drummer this is really cool anyways because each channel you can actually set to auto gain so it'll automatically gain up all the microphones anyways so it, it really does work out having in here Okay, so now it's time to wire up these low profile XLR connectors. Okay, so be easy on my soldering here. It's a little tricky when you have a camera three inches away from what you're soldering, but I just go ahead and tin all the ends first before I bother soldering anything. And then here, these are the low profile XLR connectors like I was mentioning before. You can actually move the wire to any location on this, so that just makes it really flexible to use. Okay, so now I wanna make sure that I wired up this connector properly. And the only way to do it is to run it all the way to the end of the snake in the other room. So I'm gonna take another cable. I'm going to connect these together like that. And then this cable runs down here into the other room to my cable tester. Anyway, so that cable comes to here, and then I have another little cable that I can plug into my patch bay, because that little connector out there actually runs to, to here. Now that was the uh, that's cable number two, so I can, or connector number two, so I can plug it in there, and I can use my little cable checker to see that I wired it correctly. Okay, so here you go. Here is all the cables. And then as I went through and checked to make sure that the polarity was all correct, I also numbered them. And then it's just a little piece of tape. So when I stick them in there, I can uh, pull the tape off, but at least they're all marked for right now. So I have 10 of the XLR connectors, but um, channels 11 and 12, even though these say seven and eight, these are 11 and 12. These will be literally 11 and 12 on here. And the reason that they are TRS quarter inch is because they're actually gonna be plugged into my patch bay so that I can patch in this cable, which has XLR and then quarter inch TRS, because what I wanna be able to do is use these as microphone inputs from the drum room, but then also use these two inputs for for monitoring my mix. So these will also be line inputs. So they're, they're both. And in the back patch bay, back there, I'll be able to switch to, you know, whether I want to, to use it for monitoring or actually use the mic pre's. Okay, and there you go. It's all powered up. All the wires are tucked in there, if you can see them running in the back there. So I'm gonna start recording some drums. But real quick, so these two are the ones that switch between the mic and the line ins. And if we come back behind my studio desk where the patch bay is. So if I want the line in, I just take these two cables and I put them right here, and then I can use it for my return for mixing. But since I'm gonna track some drums, it's gonna go right in here, and now I can use the uh, the mic ins. So that's just how I switch it between, between that. Oh, also between all that, I put my logos 
I, I got some new Furman power conditioners and I got my vinyl logos on them on that one and that one there. Just something a little, little cool. But anyways, so this is all hooked up. Um, I'm going to start recording drums, like I said, and then there will be another video showing what this thing sounds like. Um, you know, obviously recording a full drum kit, which, which isn't here. It's a little dark in here right now, but I'll be recording this drum kit, this setup, all these microphones, and I'll show you guys what it sounds like. All right, guys, so thanks for watching this video. Now, if you guys do want to work on a track together, so of course, what I do here is full-time, I mix and I master, and mainly that is all done online, but I also produce tracks for people, um, whether it be rock, heavy rock, I do pop, and then I do also some hip hop as well. You guys can find any of these rates and more info on my website, tssrecording.com. All that stuff is listed down below. And then also, if you guys do wanna reach out about questions about things, you just wanna talk or whatever, Instagram is definitely still the best place to reach out. I respond back to every single person that sends me a DM. So if you guys wanna talk, shoot me a DM there. Other than that, uh, definitely gonna be using the 12 mic a lot more, gonna be doing some drum tutorials where I'm gonna record my drums, using the 12 mic, and then show you guys how I mix that. That is coming up next. Also gonna get into some more drum sample recording using the 12 mic and the RME Babyface Pro FS. So look out for those videos, but that's about it for this one. So uh, till the next video, I'll see you guys then.